Hello and welcome to the Figures Exhibition Walkabout. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the work. My name is Kundai Moyo and I'm an artist based in Johannesburg. And I've always been interested in relational aesthetics, in making art that focuses on human relations. So I'm interested in how we interact with and often react to one another, both in public and private spaces. So a lot of my work over the past few years has set out to engage the topic of love as a point of departure for conducting sociological research. So thinking about love and its multiple iterations, um, its conduits, care, recognition, intimacy, and sort of using all of this as a channel to begin exploring the concept of affect theory. Um, a lot of this work is prompted by lots of reading. Um, this particular exhibition, um, I sort of borrowed heavily from concepts that uh, Roland Barthes explores in A Lover's Discourse and Bell Hooks' All About Love, as well as some of the theories that Lauren Ballant brings in her work on affect. Um, so, yeah, just a sort of mix of things. Um, let's get into it. So... The Stranger Studies uh, photography series was actually quite heavily influenced by the work of an American author and professor named Keo Stark. I remember reading um, an article on her in The Atlantic a few years ago about a course that she had designed at NYU called Stranger Studies 101, and the course set out to unpack um, the ways in which urbanization influences social behavioral patterns. Um, and for my own work on strangers, I was interested in how this ultimately began to determine how strangers read each other and allow themselves to be read in public spaces. And so that's sort of the, the basis of the Stranger Study series, um, thinking about how these images, which initially sort of appear to depict moments shared between friends and lovers, begin to offer an opportunity for us to consider um, what might happen if we allow ourselves to extend ourselves, to reach each other, to meet each other, to move and push past our uh, preconceived notions of the other, of the stranger. And the, I think the process was quite, um, was quite uh, <laughs> funny, fun, both. <laughs> I started off by sort of taking my camera and my tripod and just positioning it in front of benches and public spaces and then sort of doing the awkward work of um, randomly approaching uh, pedestrians and asking them if they, you know, if I could borrow 10 minutes of their time, if they, could, if they were willing to sort of sit and engage with a complete stranger for a while. And I got, an, I got a few no's. <laughs> a, lot of people, um, a lot of people weren't quite open to the idea um, but then slowly, uh, an interesting thing that began to happen was that the more people saw people approaching the benches and sitting down and having these interactions with each other, the more comfortable onlookers became. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that um, we often assume that there's a lot of risk involved. And I mean, there is to some degree a lot of risk involved um, in extending ourselves to meet people we've never met before, of stepping out of our comfort zones. But I think what we often find when we do do the work, when we do manage to sort of step out, we're often met with, um, I think the, I don't know, I think it's sort of like material that begins to loosen the heart. Um, this idea of sitting next to someone and having, being able to open up um, because the nature of interactions between strangers, I think the comfort in it is recognizing that they're quite, uh, those interactions are often quite inconsequential. This person doesn't really know your life. Uh, you don't really know theirs. The likelihood of you meeting again in future is slim, which sort of creates more opportunity for us to share, right? And to be less, and to feel less judged in those spaces. Um, so, and, and a lot of that became, began to happen. Um, so that was quite exciting. Um, an interesting thing about the project is that I, I started realizing that in sort of, it, it, in, in as much as I was pushing people to, in as much as I was pushing people to, the, to make the effort 
of meeting each other, I was also pushing myself to do the same. So in each encounter, there is no moment in which I'm interacting with someone I know. All of these people were strangers to me too. Um, and so I started figuring out what it meant to sort of begin to build a space of, um, a safe space. <laughs> ah, don't like that term. But, um, a comfortable space for interacting between me and my participants and the participants with each other, but also a relationship that started forming between the participants and the camera. So this got me interested in thinking about ways in which photography can be used to initiate and often mediate public interventions, as well as how the presence of the camera often begins to inform and affect human behavior and social settings. Um, by this, I mean... Um, by this, I, I I suppose I'm thinking about the, the potential for posing and how this can be linked to the ways in which we perform life on a daily basis. Um, another thing, I suppose, is that it, it, it the project for me started generating critical ways of thinking around documentary photography and how to begin slowly begin to shift um, the traditional and often intrusive and spectacularizing gaze of the camera. Uh, what does it mean to engage people as participants and not as subjects? Um, all of that sort of came about for me um, in the work. And the video work on the utility of hands and holding, it's a three-channel video installation that sort of weaves together a series of interviews, voice notes, movie clips, and GIF compilations that all sort of speak to multiple mechanisms of care and intimacy. This work was prompted by a social experiment that I conducted last year called Wanted, and I sort of set up a series of survey boxes across the main campus of its university and called for students and lecturers and sort of anyone uh, on campus to deposit their questions on love. I mean, I was sitting with my own questions and sort of sitting with this burning sense that, you know, that love is vital and that it's crucial and that it sort of makes up, I think, um, I don't know, like the underlying fabric of what it means to be human. Like it, it's one of the things that connects us, you know, sort of thinking about it as an equalizer. Uh, but a part of me felt like I was over romanticizing it. And I felt like um, getting a better sense of what people were thinking about love, some of the questions that others had on love uh, would help me in sort of answering my own or sort of moving towards getting getting more clarity um, around the topic of love. And I got an unexpected amount of responses. There were over 200. <laughs> um, and all of them, all of them felt urgent. Um, and all of them felt so deeply personal um, that it sort of solidified this idea that I had in my mind about the importance of love. Um, and so these questions sort of began prompting uh, a desire not so much to seek answers to these questions that I ended up with, but to find open-ended ways of creating a series of responses. So I went on to invite a few of my friends from different departments in the art school. Um, Saili Chuma, who is an excellent pianist, Matapelo Matavane, who is a violinist, um, Pilani Mokwena, who is a theater major, Quentin Manning, who was also a theater major at that time. And over a three week period, we held several sessions where each artist was invited to work through answering and interpreting a series of questions from the survey um, through their chosen medium. And the footage of some of these encounters is what makes up uh, a great portion of uh, on the utility of hands and holding. I also included some um, audio recordings of conversations that I had with um, some of my loved ones about um, some of the joys of love and loving and some of the more sort of difficult realities that people often have to face in, um, in intimate spaces. Um, so what's on exhibition at KZNSA at the moment is I think the fifth iteration of this video work. Um, it's always changing. Um, um, the concepts are always sort of shifting in my brain. <laughs> and I think what's new about this this moment um, in the work um, is that I think um, when I was editing it, I was on my 
family farm in the northwest, uh, surrounded by all of this greenery, um, in this moment where it felt like the world had sort of come to a standstill. Uh, but then also sort of having to grapple with, um, you know, sort of an influx of Zoom calls, um, you know, sort of every other hour. And I somehow started thinking about uh, ways of using, um, I think, this green, this green box that you find in Zoom calls as a way of thinking about how we center and focus our attention on different things. Um, so that's, I think that's an interesting thing about the work. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening to me rambling on about my work. I really hope you enjoy it and that you have constructive feedback. Um, please feel free to email me or find ways of contacting me. I would love to hear what you think about the work. And yeah, thank you so much for coming. <laughs>